The system of pipes in this house carries a fluid, hot water, that heats the house through a series of radiators. The water is heated in a furnace, but it cannot move far under its own power. A powerful pump is used to move the water around the house. After the water has passed through all the radiators, it returns to the furnace to be heated again. The analogy of the house's heating system is very close to the way the circulatory system works in vertebrates. All vertebrates have a series of pipes called vessels that carry a fluid called blood around the body. The vessels have valves to ensure that the fluid always moves in the same direction. The vessels are connected to a powerful pump called the heart. The lungs enrich the blood with oxygen used in energy reactions just as the furnace provides energy to heat the water in the house. The various organs of the body are equivalent to the radiators of the house's circulatory system. Animal circulatory systems differ from very simple examples, lacking pumps and pipes, up to the complex multi-chambered heart of vertebrates. But circulatory systems all perform a similar range of functions. They deliver oxygen and nutrients to cells. They remove waste products from cells and tissues. In many organisms, blood vessels also equalize temperature and distribute hormones. Some simple animals don't have real circulatory systems at all. Flatworms and some other invertebrate animals use simple diffusion to move digested food, gases, and waste products from one part of the organism to another. The flat shape and system of branching internal tubes of these organisms enables their cells to receive nutrients and expel waste products over short distances. The fluid filling the space between cells in an animal is called interstitial fluid. This fluid plays a vital role in the transport of chemicals between cells and tissues. Why don't all animals rely on diffusion to transport chemicals around the body? The answer lies in size and distance. The longer the distance, the longer it takes a chemical to diffuse from place to place. Diffusion is fine for tiny animals or for animals that are very flat. Such animals can absorb nutrients and other substances directly from the surroundings into their cells. For larger organisms, the speed of diffusion is just too slow. Calculations show that the movement of a small molecule across a large cell can take as long as 10 seconds. To diffuse the same molecule a distance of one meter or the height of a child would take 32 years. The rule of thumb is, if you can see an animal with the naked eye, it won't rely on diffusion, and it'll have a more complex circulatory system. Some invertebrate animals, for example insects and most mollusks, have an open circulatory system to transport food, waste, heat, and other materials. In this type of system, a tube-shaped heart pumps a fluid called hemolymph through arteries into the main body cavity, and from there, it directly bathes the various organs. Animals with open circulatory systems do not have an extensive network of blood vessels that infiltrate the organs. A closed circulatory system encloses the blood in a system of tubes called arteries, veins, and capillaries in vertebrates. In invertebrates, they are often referred to simply as vessels. In closed systems, blood is pumped very close to the cells, but the cells are not directly bathed in the blood. Instead, the cells are surrounded by interstitial fluid. Worms, sea urchins, and vertebrates all have closed circulatory systems. In the simplest case, shown by this earthworm, there is one dorsal and two ventral vessels running from the anterior to the posterior of the animal. The dorsal vessel and one of the two ventral vessels are connected by pairs of transverse connecting vessels. As in insects, there is no defined heart. The dorsal vessel serves as the main heart and the ventral vessels collect blood to be returned to the dorsal vessel. A group of five of the connecting vessels at the anterior of the earthworm act as auxiliary hearts, forcing blood into the ventral vessels.
The development of gill breathing in fish and lung breathing in land animals needed a more efficient circulatory system. The development of the heart as a muscular organ capable of pumping blood around the body was the next main evolutionary advance. A simple heart consists of two chambers. One, the atrium, receives incoming blood and acts as a reservoir. When the atrium is full, it pumps blood to a second chamber, the ventricle. The simplest vertebrate heart is seen in fish, as this diagram shows. The atrium is a relatively thin-walled chamber in which blood collects before passing to the muscular ventricle. The heart pumps blood out to the gills, where oxygen diffuses into the blood. Blood then passes from the gills to the body tissues. From there, it is collected and returned to the heart. The problem with this system is that the blood pressure drops as it passes through the gill capillaries, and it drops yet again as it passes through capillaries in the body tissues. Fish partly get over this problem by using their body's motion through the water to help the passage of blood through the circulatory system. Amphibians, like this frog, have one ventricle just like in fish, but they have two atria. This modification allows blood pump from the ventricle to the lungs and skin to pick up oxygen, then return to the heart to have its pressure boosted before passing to the body tissues. More pressure equals more oxygenated blood passing to the tissues in a reduced amount of time. In amphibians, the blood returning to the left atrium from the lungs is oxygenated and is ready for the body tissues. But as it passes into the ventricle, it is only partially separated from the deoxygenated blood returning from the tissues. Some of the freshly oxygenated blood, therefore, goes back to the lungs again. This is a design problem that seemed to be waiting for evolution to solve. This circulatory system belongs to a reptile. It is almost the same as the amphibian system, but note the wall, or septum, down the center of the ventricle. The septum helps prevent the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood from mixing, thus increasing the efficiency of the circulation. You can also see that the septum does not completely separate the ventricle into two chambers, so some mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood could still take place. Now look at this circulatory system. The septum is now complete, and there are two distinct ventricles. This efficient system is found in birds and mammals. It ensures that the oxygenated blood from the lungs passes to the body organs with no mixing in the ventricles. Now that we've explored the different types of hearts found in the different vertebrate groups, see if you can match the hearts on the screen with the animals that have them. Click Submit to see if you're correct. That's right! Sorry, that's not quite right. The simplest vertebrate heart is seen in fish. There is only one atrium and one ventricle in these animals. Frogs and other amphibians have two atria and a single ventricle. Most reptiles have a septum that partially separates the ventricle into two separate ventricles. Birds and mammals have two distinct ventricles.